It seems like a lot of you guys that have been following my channel started doing that because of a solo legendary build or a full solo legendary run or through a solo legendary live stream. Uh, I get a lot of questions about the solo legendary activities that I'm doing. And I want to start off by saying that I'm nowhere even close to being as good as other people are. There are some really unique players in the community that can solo legendaries in a matter of literal minutes they can one shot bosses they can do all sorts of stuff and even though i'm nowhere even close to their level i've been actually trying to clear solo legendaries quite for a long time and i can say that i've been for the most part successful uh, i've cleared dua i've cleared capital building i cleared title basin i clear cleared roosevelt island and now I'm actually attempting to clear Mining National Zoo on my own, which is still in progress. I haven't completed that yet, but I'm doing progress every week. So I think that because I've been getting all those solo legendary questions, it was a good idea for me to actually do a full guide on each and every stronghold that you can do on legendary difficulty all by yourself. So today we're going to start with District Union Arena. Um, as I said, I'm not the best. I'm not even close to being one of the best. So there might be better ways to do what I'm doing. I don't know. I'm just going to share with you what works for me after a lot of attempts, failed attempts, especially District Union Arena was the one that uh, was the first legendary that I completed. And it was the first that I wiped for literally weeks until I finally got it down. So starting off, before we actually start, uh, I will try to share with you my thought process um, before and during every single encounter in the stronghold. Uh, I will share with you why I'm doing what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, I hope that you guys are going to find the video helpful. Starting off uh, the build. The build is a very important part when you first start clearing solo legendaries because it has to fit your play style perfectly if you're not feeling conf confident with your build and comfortable that's the most important thing then you will not be able to use it to its fullest and you will miss out on a lot of it over here as you can see i'm using a very standard uh striker memento build uh, we have four striker pieces including the chess piece because we will as i said we're doing the solo so we will be having enough time to get those 200 stacks at the most um, heavy, so to say, encounters. Then we have a group of Sombra piece for the 15% critical hit damage. The Memento, the Memento is uh, very straightforward while you're using it. We have two cores over here. We need the weapon damage, we need the armor, and then we have the long-term buff, will, which will give me another 30% weapon damage and 3% armor generation, which is very, very helpful for what we're doing because it means I will not have to count on my armor kits to give me armor back, but I know that Memento will do that as well. We also get 10% armor on kill from the specialization, which is Gunner, of course. We have three blue cores. The rest are red, four red, three blue. You can go with five blue. You can go with four blue. You can go with as many as you feel that you need. And then, of course, we have the St. Elmos because it is... Uh, I think the best assault rifle um, right now in the game. But yeah, um, if you're more confident with a skill build with drone and turret, use that. It doesn't matter what build you're using as long as it's pretty good because you need a pretty good build, but also as long as you're confident, confident and comfortable with it. So let's get started. Oh, my skills, uh, I forgot about this. Decoy, because that means I will have a couple of extra seconds when I use it, where the enemies will not face me, but the decoy, and then of course the revive hive. Now, as you start, you have to always keep in mind that it's a very likely outcome is that you're gonna die at some point. The whole process of doing solo legendaries is you playing, attempting different stuff, see what works, see what doesn't, wipe, and then do the mission again until you got to the part where you died and try something different and see what works the best and what doesn't. Here in the first part, 
we have um, three, if I remember correctly, turrets that we need to take down as soon as possible, simply because those tend to push towards us. And then we have um, drone, uh, what are they called? Drone engineers or drone operators? Yeah, drone operators and grenadiers. You need to have an, how it's called, a, a list, so to say, with what you have to go after uh, the fastest, what type of NPC you need to kill first. My personal list, grenadiers and drone operators are on the top. Then we have everything else. Unless there are shotgunners, which always rush you, those go up on top when you have those. And then number two, we have the grenadiers and the drone operators. Turrets uh, and dogs really depend on the map layout and on if they're pushing you or not. Tangas, I know a lot of people tend to freak out when they see Tangas coming, but Tangas die quite fast. So you don't have to worry about them so much. So starting off here, um, the best place in my opinion is behind this because this offers you 100% cover, this side, they cannot shoot you through the top of it like they can from over here. So you come here, we scan a little bit what we have. We have three mechanics, right? Those are the mechanics. Those are gonna repair the turrets and the dogs. So you wanna take those down as well. We have one um, grenadier up there, another grenadier up there. And then we have the turrets. Okay, so let's show that over there. Let it take aggro. Where did my decoy go? Am I lagging? Why am I lagging? Okay, I guess. Okay, so. Yeah, I'm lagging really hard right now. Uh, so let's see how our pink will behave now. Okay, so as I said, um, turrets first here because they tend to push. And that means mechanics have high priority as well. I guess we'd have been dead. Grenadiers. If you can take them down, take them. Mechanics. I hear a turret pushing. So we will need to address that. Assault rifles have health on damage, and these guys take more damage uh, from damage to health. That's why assault rifles are ideal for legendaries. Okay, so now the turrets are all down. We go for grenadiers, and if you cannot find the grenadiers, then you just shoot anything you can, really. We don't have memento stacks at the moment. So we need to be careful. The first part of the of a legendary, any legendary really, are the hardest. If you're using Memento. You know, pick some of these up. We're gonna throw our decoy there. So the shotgun ears go over there. That will buy us a couple of seconds. As I said, when shotgun ears are out, you prioritize these guys. And if you cannot find them, then you go for drone operators. With builds like the one we're using right now, you can take down the drones quite easily. So have that in mind. Okay, now the Tanga comes. Um, the Tanga, as you will notice, uh, he will push very slowly and he won't even push us all the way where we are. So we don't have to worry too much about that. But it's a good target to build up stacks. Sniper turrets are not an issue. Hyenas, however, coming from outside the mission might be. Yeah.
this most likely won't happen to you. There we go. But yeah, in this wave, you have to worry mostly about um, drone operators. But I think we took them down already. You can take this down for trophies. Okay, and I think it's only one tango left alive here. Yeah. That wasn't too hard. The hardest part really in this mission is the first part. When the turrets can all push you at the same time. Uh, one turret tends to go that way and the other two tend to go that way if you don't take them down fast enough. So you need to keep that in mind. But as you saw, even with no stacks on our Memento, even with no stacks on our Striker, um, if you just start shooting the turrets at the beginning of the mission, you will take them down quite fast because we have that damage to health from our St. Elmo's engine from any assault rifle, really. Mine is not even maxed out, it's just 19%. My expertise is also not maxed out, it's 14%, and I only have like 14% weapon damage on my St. Elmo's. So really, if even if you have zero expertise level, you won't, you won't struggle too much. Here, um, just try to kill the medics, if that's possible so they don't put down their med boxes. And take down the revive drones. Okay, so they got their boxes down. It's not the end of the world. You don't have to be as risky as I am over here. So what we do in this situation is we go for the med box. Once that guy's dead, throw the decoy there. The tangas are gonna come, so you wanna be as back as possible. Now you just shoot at everything. The Tsangas at some point most likely are going to come to you. And these Tsangas are going to push you all the way to your position. So you want to fall back if that happens. Okay, these guys didn't push me. But if you cannot kill them fast enough and they get over here even if you have taken down their backpack so you don't worry about the bleed from the from the stingers that they're gonna come at you you need to fall back because the tangas will push you like this so what you do is you fall back into this area right and you, you there is a sweet spot not sweet spot but there is a magic spot over here where you can shoot the enemies but they cannot shoot you through this wall over here a lot of people are going to complain uh it's glades or, or whatever uh it's been in the game ever since it came out nobody ever uh mentioned anything about fixing it so i'm using it now we have full memento stacks as you can see 30 memento stacks that means that we have three percent armor generation and 30 percent weapon damage which is very good now when we open the door behind here is a guy on a minigun three snipers even more behind than the minigun and then you have a couple of rushers that you need to take down as fast as possible so here's the minigun the rushers three rushers as you can see all of them are dead and now we deal with the snipers oh another guy in the minigun
Okay, now this next part is actually the... I consider it to be one of the most challenging parts because if you don't kill the drone operators and the grenadiers fast enough, you're going to have enemies pushing you all the way over here. While at the same time, you're going to have grenades and explosive drones coming at your position, which is going to be inside there. If that happens, it really comes down to individual's experience in order to get the right position, to know what targets to pick, to be accurate, check them all down. But ideally, you don't want to get to that point. You want to make sure that whoever tries to push this over here, this lane, so to say, is going to die. We're going to be sitting inside there. As soon as I push, the doors are going to open and they're going to come out. So we want to make sure to take down as many of them as fast as possible before we have to fall back because we're going to start getting drones and grenades in our position. So, decoy. Drone operators over there. Grenadiers. So now, as you see, I kind of have to fall back. Most of the drone operators are dead. I think all of them at this point. Grenadiers. One more drone operator apparently is back there. Take down the drones. See, this guy's pushing. But because he doesn't have any friends... To suppress fire me, so to say, I don't have to worry too much about it. Oh. This is the, the part that it's the hardest, at least for me, most of the time, simply because a lot of them tend to push. If I don't get a couple of kills at the beginning like I did, then they tend to push and then you're in a very bad spot because one of them will sit here, we're here, another one will go over here, and another guy will go over here as well. And if they are the drone operators and they just send out drones, they don't pick you, you cannot kill them. So you're stuck trying to avoid grenades, trying to take down those drones. It's, it's a very messy situation. The best tip is to kill them before they actually get to that point. Here, uh, pretty straightforward stuff, really. Just take down two dogs. There we go. Okay, this part. There are three waves that will come out. It's actually, no, it's the first wave that's already outside. Then you have one more wave, which is uh, dogs and turrets. And then the last wave, uh, which is uh, some more NPCs and a couple of turrets. You need to be careful. Again, the priority for the targets remains the same. If you can choose what you're going to suit at, drone operators, um, turrets and dogs won't really push you that hard so you don't have to worry too much about them but keep in mind that there are a couple of mechanics so if you start shooting at a dog or a turret make sure you finish it off otherwise it will go to a mechanic and it will get repaired you don't want to push further than this the, the furthest that you want to push is that wall and that wall over there either that you want to chill back here throw that over there Drone operator, I missed that. Another drone operator, I missed the drones as well. Okay, let's see if we can take down this turret. I don't think we can. Okay, we can. Drone operator. Our NPCs will push you, but not a lot of them, and not at the same time. Most of the time, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Again, drones, you need to take those down if you can. Mechanic is down. Now have the second wave. That's the dogs. That dog is already down. And then we have the sniper dog. 
We still have a drone operator back there. He's down. Now we throw the decoy over there. The last wave is coming out now. It's a nice spot where you can like spawn camp them a little bit. Then we have a turret. Turret down. Last is a sniper. Okay, next wave. Next encounter. So, as soon as we go over there, you're going to have a couple of rushes. I think three, if I remember correctly. Shotgunners or whatever they are. They're going to come out there. They're going to jump through that... Um, uh, bar thing, whatever it is, and then it's hangar is going to come out that way as well. Obviously, you want to take down the shotgunners first because those are going to ras you. The, the, the tanga, as we said, takes longer to get to you. So as long as you're behind cover, you don't have to worry too much. Shotgunners are down. Now we jump back here. We don't want to risk anything. We throw the decoy. Go for the backpack. And by the time he realizes where we are, he's already dead. Now we go back. I forgot about that. We need to pick up ammo. There is an ammo box back here. We need to pick up ammo because the next part is actually quite not hard but challenging in a sense that you need to be very patient. Patient, excuse me. You don't. You must not push outside that door over there. No matter what happens, no matter how annoying the enemies will get, don't push outside this door over here. So there are. I don't even know how many waves will come out the door over there. Um, because I always play from inside here, so I don't really see, but I think it's like three waves. One of them has a tank on the final wave. So the whole plan here is we stay in here and we only shoot and kill the guys that get in our line of sight. Now, the issue is that they have a lot of cover to play behind from. They can have healers that will heal them. They have healers that will revive them. So you need to be very patient with how you approach this. Also, you need to use your headsets in order to hear what's going on behind this wall over here. You can hear footsteps of the enemies pushing you, and you can also see your radar. Uh, it will indicate that the enemies are getting closer if someone decides to rush you from this side over here. So it just shows in front of you the last second. As you can see, we have the DPS to take them down. Even if they come right in front of us, even two or three at a time, we don't worry too much about that. If you want, you can throw a decoy over there. That will distract them. Okay, we have some grenades pump. Gonna use an armor kit here. The Tsanga is getting closer. Okay, so... Let's see how close these guys are. Tsang is quite close, so now we're going to fall back. And now we can push again. And that was it. Ideally, you want to be able to kill the Tanga before he gets here because if he gets here he can push all the way over here all right so if you're here and you see that you don't have the dps to take him down before he pushes from over there to over here you need to fall back back here and play like this 
but the, the ideal uh, play to do this is just, you know, hold this line of sight and gun down everything that shows in your iron sight. And uh, that will include the Tsanga as well, because I, if I remember correctly, I'm not sure actually, Tsanga comes this way like this. Uh, he might come like this as well. That means that you don't have that much time to take him down. You might be able to take him down. You might not be able to take him down. You're just going to have to to use your judgment to see what's better to fall back or stay there. Okay, this part. Uh, three Tsangas will come out after we kill this wave. Um, nothing too challenging here. The Tsangas most likely will push behind that bar and over there before you're able to kill them. You're going to have to make up your mind if you want to stay here and fight them or if you want to fall back. Most of the times I tend to fall back because I don't have taking i haven't killed them before they enter that bar uh, i fall back as soon as as soon as they enter the bar i throw a decoy run back and then you will see from where i'm playing this okay i missed a lot of shots there and i keep missing shots are we gonna get soaked here no we're not okay so Tsangas are already out. Okay, so now is the time to fall back. I'm going to use an armor kit, throw the decoy as well. Then I'm going to run like this. This is where we hold them. If they push us, they can push inside this room, both the Tsangas and normal NPCs. If I see that I don't have enough TPS to finish them off before they enter my room, I fall back even further as I'm about to show you. Actually, we won't need to fall further back. Most likely, but I will show you after we're done with this. Okay, so in case they push us through that door, we fall back over here. And this is where we find them. Both NPCs and Tangas, as I said, can't push through this. So you got to be a little bit careful here. This room over here, there are two ways that you can play this. Um, you can either stay over here like this and, and take, you know, the long route, so to say, in order to complete this, wait for the enemies either to push you or to peek and you take them down. They have med boxes again, so it can be a little bit annoying them healing all the way back up or you can push all the way to that corner over there. Personally, I prefer to play this the safe way until back here. As you can see, it can be a little hard on us, grenades and stuff. They can push this door as well. Um, they don't tend to do that a lot, but sometimes they do. And if you don't anticipate it, you might find yourself in a bad position. Can I kill that guy? Yes, I can. Okay, one guy left. No, oh, there are more guys left actually. Yeah, 
and we're good. Okay, now we're now we're facing the. Give me a second to turn my phone off because these notifications um, are actually kind of annoying. Apologies for that. Okay, so next part. The next part is the big like both like build tech in a sense that you need a good build, but also the big like the first test in order to see how lucky you're gonna get if you wish. The next part depends a lot on your luck. Um, and I'm going to explain what I mean when we get over there. But basically, for those of you who pretty much know the, the map layout, um, once we exit the door, we want to run upstairs to the balcony. Now, first things first, you don't want to push... Actually, I'm going to talk about that later when we're done. But once, once you get up on that balcony, you're going to have to kill a couple of enemies. I don't remember exactly how many of them are before the doors right in front of you open and the Tsanga and Rassers and Grenadiers come out. But you want to make sure that before that wave, that wave comes out, you take down as many Grenadiers as possible. The first wave that is already spawned in the room that we're going to go has a couple of Grenadiers, has a couple of turrets that can throw grenades. So you want to be very, very um, careful taking down the Grenadiers because we are in a very small area where if they decide to start spamming us, then we're going to have a very hard time surviving. Um, keep in mind that every Grenadier spams three grenades unless you stop him, and then he stops. Uh, so if you have two Grenadiers shooting at you at the same time, you have six grenades coming at you. You cannot survive six grenades. Even if you use your Revive Hive, if you go down, you use your Revive Hive, and then you get back up again, the Grenadiers by that point will have reload a second, like three grenades round, or whatever you want to call it, and they're going to start all over again. So you, you want to be very careful. You want to be very fast, and you, you're you going to need to be lucky as well. Grenadier, take that guy down. We're still here, okay? We don't care about that. We care about the Grenadiers. We need to find the Grenadiers and take them down. What's another mechanic over there? As I told you, turret will throw grenades. That's a grenadier. That's good. The enemies will come out that way. The second wave that I talked about earlier. We want to take down that grenadier over there if we can. They will push up the stairs, so you have to keep that in mind. Can I see that guy? Oh, no, I cannot. We also want to maintain some of our stacks here. There we go. That guy's dead, so we're good. Grenadier, you want to get that guy? Or at least get his backpack if you cannot finish him. And now I think after we kill this guy, the guys, the second wave is going to spawn. Yeah, there we go. Sangas and Rasters. Obviously, Rasters are the priority here. Because they're going to get to us faster than the Sangas are. The Tsangas will not push you. The Tsangas will reach that box over there. And then they're going to drop down the, uh, the stairs. Now third wave is out. It's dogs. So we're relaxing a little bit. Cannot see any of them, however. Jesus Christ, everyone is going nuts right now, calling me. I 
Okay, so now we've done a couple of things. So, remember that way with the Tsangas that comes out that door? If you push further than this over here, if you are, let's say, over here, they're going to come out that door over there. And that's going to be GG. Well played, you're going to die, most likely. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is, if for whatever reason, Tsangas are getting closer to you than what happened with me here, if they get, let's say, over here, even if you haven't taken them the backpacks down and they start bleeding you, use your armor kits. Don't panic. You have a revive hive, most likely. You have a couple of armor kits. They're going to jump down like this. And they're going to come up like that. So what you can do is, as soon as the second one jumps down, you just go over here, right? Fall back a little bit. Fall back here. Like this. Why? Because if you stay over here, you're vulnerable to grenadiers. The grenades that they're going to lance up here are going to hit you. So you're going to get down. If you're over here, it's much, much harder for them to push you. However, you need to keep in mind that you're vulnerable from your back, from your sinks. So try to take them down, but also keep an eye from what's going on behind you. <coughs> Other than that, uh, nothing too much to talk about here. As I showed you, when you first come up here, take down the Grenadiers. If you find a Grenadier on your way up here, take him down as well, assuming he's a red and you could take him down easily. If he's a purple or an elite, don't stay here. You're going to die most likely. Also, remember to pick up the mental trophies even if you don't need them, so you reset the cooldown timer. Okay. Next part over here is pretty straightforward. You're going to jump down. You're going to have a couple of uh, grenadiers and shotgunners again. Uh, just chill over here. Pick a little bit at the beginning. Start falling back when you see that they're pushing. And you're going to be fine. Nothing too crazy about this part. Use the memento trophies if you need some bonus armor to stay alive. And that's it. And now this part that we're going to right now is the second most hardest part after the previous one. And I'm saying hardest not because it is anything hard. I consider the first part to be hardest, the very, very first part of the mission. But you have to get pretty lucky again. Let me just show you. I think I'm not going to be good at explaining this part. So let's just get started. Again, we have a couple of waves coming out that door and another door over there. You need to focus on drone dr drone operators and dogs. Your decoy must be thrown at that position. So any drones, as you can see, go towards that and not yourself. Gonna I use an armor kit. I don't feel like going down yet. The only issue with the decoy over there is that you cannot shoot anything behind it. Drone operator down. So the drones are gonna deconstruct as well or destroy themselves. Tar it down. Keep an eye on what's going on to your left. Throw the drone, the decoy over there. So now you have line of sight with that corner over there. That mechanic is down. More drones are coming. We don't worry about them. They're going to our decoy. Okay, new wave is out. Oh, those are a couple of reds. Nothing too crazy to worry about if they come over here go for their legs a 
we're gonna need to take that guy down. There we go. Explode. Destroy the drones as soon as he pops them off. That way, he's gonna take all the damage. Grenadier down. Another grenadier back there. Kill those reds. Okay. Three grenades, as I said. That grenadier has to die. Okay, we need to take him down. He, he, he repositioned himself, so we're good for the time being. There we go. Now he has the heals. Take down the healing box. Maybe that's what I've been a priority. There we go. And we're done. At some point, it got a little sketchy when the Grenadier was over here. We couldn't kill him because we didn't have a line of sight of him. And we got the Grenades thrown at us. And he was also in the healing box range. So... You saw at some point we got like five, six grenades on us when the other guy from over here was shooting us as well. As well. You want to play like this, throw your decoy to draw some aggro, get lucky, that counts a lot. And uh, basically you have to play this a bunch of times until you get used to it really uh, and have a feeling of what you need to do. The more times you play, the more encounters you have, the better your experience, so you know how to react to certain things that are happening. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Dogs are coming out. Take them down. Don't take them down like this. We got a little cocky there. Okay. That guy's EMP'd. Go for his legs. There we go. Throw a decoy over there for when the next wave comes out. Shotgunners are coming out now. And then we're going to have a tanga from the door to the right. Two tangas, excuse me. We want to chill back here. Take down these guys first. Wait for the Tsenga. Uh, why? I cannot see any of them. Okay, obviously this is not ideal. The other guy is pushing to my right. The idea here is to kill the one guy first. Like, one will go to the right, one will go to the left. Kill the guy on one side, and then if the other guy pushes you from the other side, go towards the side of the Tanga that you've killed. So 
So if I had killed this guy first and the other guy was pushing me over here, I would have fallen back like this. And that's it, you made it to the checkpoint, really. The worst part is over. Now you don't have to worry about dying and losing all your progress. If you die, you have a checkpoint. There we go, checkpoint reached. Now here, you, you, you must not die. If you die, you're gonna lose your memento stack. So this is going to be 10 times harder. We have some guys up there. We have some guys down here. The second wave is gonna be four guys, two from this side and two from the other side back there are gonna drop down with ropes. You want to take those, you need to know that those guys are coming because those are sword gunners and drone operators. You have to kill them as fast as possible. So let's start this. Throw that over there. Now we just wait for the sniper to decide to pick so we can kill it. There we go. Throw the decoy over there. I missed a lot of my swords. Operators are alive, so gunners are alive. We're gonna fall back. Okay, one operator down. The decoy, as you can see, helped us. These guys were still shooting at it. Have one guy close over here. You need to play a lot of attention to your minimap. Drone operator dead. So this will not explode on us. This guy down as well. Okay. These guys are going to jump from here. Medics are going to do their things. Going to start reviving people if you can't stop that. But don't risk dying. It's not worth it at this point. Your memento stack is more important than killing a couple of enemies a couple of more times. Drone operators back there. Let's try to take down that revive drone. There we go. I should have died there. I pushed too hard. I shouldn't have done that. That was unnecessary. Okay, the boss is out. Take down the med box, there we go. And I'll focus on killing any NPCs and leave the boss for last. Obviously this might be easier said than done. You don't want to push towards over there because you don't really have that much cover as you have over here. The healing box is still healing people. 
There, you see? That guy pushed. The boss always also is pushing. No. Didn't see the boss coming that way. This is a very bad position to be at. I'm gonna kill that guy. Okay, that got close for a second there. And now we have to take down his backpack. Play like this. Don't be in cover. Don't be like this because if you pick, he can shoot you. Can I? No. Okay, we have no armor kits. Um. And we also have no armor regeneration from our memento because memento is stacked. It's bugged actually, not stuck. So this is going to be interesting to say the least. Maybe we can find an armor kit down. That would be very helpful. But uh, I don't think that we will. No. And memento is bugged. So you don't have your 3% armor regeneration. So if we start bleeding, we're going to die. No armor kit up here either. Maybe there is one up there. I don't know. Yeah, obviously this is not uh, something that will happen to you most likely. Your memento suit and bag. No, nope, those are memento trophies. I'm not even getting bonus armor. I don't know if you can see that when I'm picking up the memento trophies. We found an armor kit, so that's good. But we'll have to make it uh, worth it. That's bullshit. I don't know if that fixed the memento. No, it did not. So basically, we need to count on our Vive Hive only here. We have no armor regeneration, no bonus armor from the memento trophies. I don't know. If, I don't even know if we have the extra weapon damage. I think, yeah, we broke off the, the the backpack so we can damage him now, but with his bleeding bullets and uh, us having no armor whatsoever. I don't know how possible that will be. At least he cannot EMP us now. So the decoy over there. 
pick from the other side and then die from the bleed. Oof, we actually made it. Even our health doesn't go up. Oh, never mind, our health goes up. Get him down. This is cutting you close. Oh boy. I don't want to wipe now. <laughs> Throw that over there. There we go. Okay, we got it. But yeah, your memento can't bug out like mine just did. But it's still, it's still doable. So yeah, that's it pretty much. This last part over here, after the first wave comes, you want to fall back there. Because this offer, offers the most cover in the entire room. They cannot shoot through this entire thing. I mean, they can like this, but in general, they cannot. This offers covers, this offer covers, this offers cover as well. So you're good again from this side and uh, just take your time. Don't try to rush things. It's better to take you longer and to complete it than for you to wipe again, again, again. So yeah, that's it pretty much guys. I hope that you find uh, this guide helpful. Uh, if I see that you guys enjoy uh, this video, then I will most definitely make uh, for the rest uh, strongholds as well. I mean, title basin. I'm still. I have. I have only cleared twice. Once was on stream. The other was just by myself. So I'm still learning that. I'm not able to make a guide for that yet. But capital building, and um, what's the other? Um, capital building, and Roosevelt Island. I have a pretty good way to clear them I think I've cleared them a lot of times both of them so I'm confident sharing with you uh, the way I do it so yeah if you enjoyed the video please make sure to drop like and subscribe for more content have a wonderful day everybody bye bye